Hey everyone, and welcome back to Disney Twisted Media. We're going to cover another one of my favorite band songs. Like I say, probably one of their most well-known, most popular songs, Primo Victoria. The song about the Allied invasion of Europe, the fight back Nazi Germany, and retake all of the conquered lands. Now, Primo Victoria, first victory, uh, it was kind of true. There was many victories before that, but... D-Day was initially planned as the response, as kind of like the counter-offensive to Hitler's final domination over most of France. Now, there still were French resistant fighters, and there was also some skirmishes going on over land and also over sea and air, but Germany had mostly dominated all of Europe. And it, if, although the initial counteroffensive was planned for 1942 to 1943 and different operations, Operation Overlord was basically finally approved because the United States, Canada, and also many other European countries, including Britain, were finally able to accumulate enough men, train them, and build the proper equipment to conduct these amphibious landings. Now, their first obstacle was the English Channel, which actually the operation was delayed by several days because of extremely bad weather. And the problem was is that they were facing the possibility of German spies finally catching wind of what they were doing, especially since they had like so many different nations and letting the Nazis know that what's going on so that Field Marshal uh, Rommel and the other German high command could do something about it. But luck was on their side. Now that was the first obstacle. Their second obstacle was Hitler's Atlantic Wall. Now, he had ordered Field Marshal Erwin Rommel and many other German high commanders to build a large connected series of coastal offenses. And these spanned all the way from Spain up towards France, up and around, all the way to Norway. And just had countless millions of tons of steels used to build tank traps. They built about six million mines. Uh, they had sea mines. And they also had mutually supporting machine gun bunkers and artillery in depth and like type of in-depth defense system that was just a nightmare. Now, the purpose of the Atlantic Wall was not necessarily to stop them out to sea. That's why they still had boats. But we'll get to the boat part. But the artillery and machine guns specifically placed to cover all of the beaches, meaning that the Hitler wanted to stop the Allied forces invading on the beach and he produced as much casualties as possible. And from what we know about the Omaha Beach landing, specifically the worst beach of the five beaches the Allies land on, casualties were atrocious. And we're talking about thousands of casualties on that spot alone and that they had to use not one, not two, but three waves to finally break through. It took all day long on June 6th. Now, funny enough, the night of the actual, before D-Day actually happened, June 5th, or the day of June 5th, uh, Field Marshal Rommel actually like left his post and went home to go hang out with his wife on her birthday. And he didn't get a phone call till later on that night that the invasion had actually started. Now, the invasion didn't start with the beach landings. Before that, about 800 plus aircraft went over the beaches and, and further deeper into Europe to drop paratroopers behind the, behind the lot, German lines. Now, their job was to cause as much ruckus, chaos, capture key bridges, and take out key artillery pieces that the Germans had. Not everything went according to plan. Everything that could go wrong did go wrong. Now, they were also backed up by a large amount of French resistance fires, which suffered heavy casualties as well during this fighting. So, the morning of June 6, 1944, the Germans woke up and whether they saw thousands upon thousands of ships spread all across the beaches of Normandy. Now, in this song, Sabaton covers all of that madness. Let's take a look. Through the gates of hell, as we may cut away to heaven, through the Nazi lines,
Holy crap. <laughs> um, that really had nothing to do with the D-Day landing. Uh, it was... Uh, as some of you may have known, I watched the Bismarck video I've done and maybe others... Uh, Sabaton has a kind of like a, an agreement, a, some kind of business relationship with war gaming. Uh, and that tank you saw them driving, the one that's definitely not from World War II, that's a Centurion 1 tank. It was a, a specific design tank that was given to the Swedish army uh, later on. As you all know, Sabaton is a Swedish band. So what War Gaming did was they took a Centurion 1, like, customized it to be a Sabaton tank. Like you saw Joaquin Broden's, like his little body armor he has. Well, they had it, the body armor actually on the front of the tank. And when it first came out years, I think it was about a year ago, weird and some change, I bought it because I was like, oh, I'm a huge Sabaton fan. And then I played the tank because it, in the game, it's a medium tank. And I realized I sucked at the medium tank. Anyways, let's carry on with D-Day. This obviously had nothing to do with D-Day. I think the closest thing it had was Panzer threes, but they weren't using Panzer threes during 1944 to defend. I mean, that was like, I think they had like maybe some training units left behind, but that's about it. Uh, they, that's what the era of the Tiger came into play. But anyways, so Field Marshal Rommel, he was surprised by like how fast and the tenacity of attacking. Cause again, Normandy is pretty far away. It's a pretty long distance from Britain when you actually look across the English Channel. Now, they actually expected the Allies to show up during, to, towards uh, Passe de Calais, which is a little bit further east and is a much, a much shorter distance between Britain and, of course, France. Now, you got to remember that the Allied forces have been doing a huge deception program, a huge deception like like non-stop operations, giving false signals, setting up fake tanks, fake troops, fake supplies, even constantly setting up fake radio messages to make the Germans think that they were going to attack in a completely different location. So Normandy was the perfect choice, not only because of the distance and unexpectedness, but also because their Malad troops were trained to land specifically on those beaches, which were the easiest ones to land on. And unfortunately, as we saw, like on Omaha Beach, the casualties were outrageous. However, the German high command was really fighting each other. Erwin, like Field Marshal Rommel, had to fight against a lot of other German high command because what Hitler was supposedly doing was setting up kind of like a, um, a animosity between all of them and competition in order to keep being, keeping either of them from getting too powerful and possibly replacing him. Now, as may not be known by many people, Erwin uh, Field Marshal Rommel actually helped plan the assassination of Hitler later on in July of 1944, which he was then forced to take his life. Now, remember, at this point, Nazi Germany is basically losing. Once the Allies had come across, they had broken through, they had made five separate beach, beachheads and landed on it and fortified those positions, started pushing deeper and deeper into France and into Europe. The German high command basically knew they were screwed, they were done. Now, there's still a lot of diehards in there, but the war was basically over. And unfortunately for Field Marshal Rommel, he was discovered to be part of that plot. And Hitler and, uh, sent two, ger two generals and a bunch of other SS troops, I believe, to go and force him to commit suicide. It was either that or have a public trial and have his family basically murdered and disgraced. So Field Marshal Rommel took the first option and took a cyanide pill to kill himself. Uh, a little bit of history about that, but get back into D-Day. It's it was a huge, massive operation. Very, very chaotic, very crazy, uh, and so many deaths. You're talking about ultimately there was like I want to say there was I don't know exactly how many of the casualties were, but I know that three million men were eventually involved in the operation. Well, including women as well in the French resistance. But three million men. There was like about like about six thousand warships or different types of ships that brought them across like 12,000 aircraft, not only covering their landings, but also covering the bombings and other operations deep inside Europe. It was huge. It was the largest amphibious operation of all time. And you know what? We won. We beat Nazi Germany. Anyways, guys, I really enjoy doing these videos. It gives me a chance to talk about history a lot, something I don't get to do very often. Always like, subscribe if you like what we're doing, or comment down below. Let us know something that you know, and we'll see you next time.